So, a father's wisdom. So I'm in graduate school. I'm finished graduate school, and I'm in Miami, Florida. I'm going to stay in Florida. I was starting to play in the jazz scene down there, and I was starting to play in some Afro-Cuban bands. And I was starting to make some connections, so I was going to stay. Hilda was going to move down, be a bartender. It didn't make sense to come back to Philly. I was already working. And there was a lot, there was a lot going on in Miami then, and more was going to happen. So uh, I'm sitting in in this place, this Unitarian church every Monday night, led by Ira Sullivan, another great, great jazz player. And uh, at the time when Maynard's band was off, a lot of guys were from Miami, so they would come and they would sit in at the same church. So through the years of being down there, I met the guys on the band. And Eric Traub, a great tenor player who was on Maynard's band, I got to meet him. And he says, look, uh, would you be interested in going out on the road? There may be an opening. And I was finished school. I was hanging down in Miami. I didn't have to worry about finishing my master's. So I said, yeah, yeah sure, sure. So I had to get a play along. Uh, I had to create a, 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 a tape of my playing. So I got a Jamie Andrews old play along, the Paying Dues, Paying Dues, that play along. And I remember I put a ballad, a swing, and some funk thing together, or a Latin thing, and I just improvised to it. And I, I sent that tape in. And I was finished college, I'm staying down there. I get the phone call that, you know, we'd like to have you on the band. The band goes out on the road in eight days. Would you do it? And I said, well, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll do it. And so I'm baritone sax. I didn't even own a baritone. I actually borrowed a baritone from Tom Moon, who's a great writer, great player, and he's doing a lot of great playing in Philly area. Uh, but he wrote that book, uh, A Thousand Songs You Should Listen To Before You Die. And uh, he was a friend from Miami. And um, anyway, I got his baritone. And I had to move home. So I had like eight days to pack up everything in Miami, move to Philly, uh, drop off everything at home, and then go out on the road. Why keep a place down in Miami if I'm not going to be living there? So, but I remember I called my dad or I called home and my dad picked it up. And I said, hey, uh, dad, you know, I got, a, I got a chance to go on a row with Maynard's band. And he's all excited because he knew what that meant. And I thought I did, but, oh boy. There's a time in your life when you think you just know a lot and you really don't know much. And this is that time. So I call him up and I say, uh, yeah, I got a chance to go on a row with Maynard's band. Now, my dad's a labor. My dad works for a gas company where they put gas lines in the street and they connect it to homes and businesses. And uh, so he, he thought it was great. And my mom was a cook, so I don't have like music people in my family. But they understood opportunity. And I didn't understand much of anything because <laughs> I was stupid. So I tell my dad, I said, um, uh, I said, yeah, Dad, but, uh, you know, Maynard, I, I, I made a tape. They, they want me to come out and be on the band. You know, they try you out for a tour, and if it works, then they keep you, all right? So you know that first tour is like a trial period. They're watching you, but you get a chance to go out. So I, uh, I'm i telling my dad, I said, yeah, d yeah, d yeah, Dad, it's, it's, they want me out, but, uh, you know, the, the gig's on Barry, and I'm really like a tenor sax player, you know. The phone gets quiet. Not a good sign. Not a good sign. And, uh, you know, nothing. <coughs> nothing. Nothing on the phone. I'm there, uh, Dad, and he goes, what? What did you say? My dad is a, what well, he was, he was a repeater. He liked to repeat things, and I didn't really know other like Italians who repeated until I saw De Niro do his repeating thing. And I remember when I saw De Niro do it, I thought, it's just, my dad did that. And my dad would say, uh, he said, what'd you just say? What'd you say? What'd you say? What is that you said? What did you just say? And I was like, well, I said, you know, I'm really, the gig's on baritone, and I'm really a tenor player. And my dad goes, well, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What, what do you mean? What are you talking about? What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> He's doing his De Niro repeating thing. And I was like, well, you know, Dad, my thing is really tenor. And he goes, wait, wait, wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. 
it's not going well. And I told him, I said, well, you know, Dad, I'm really a tenor player, not a Barry player. And he says, are you telling me that you're thinking about maybe not going out on the road because he asked you to play baritone? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? Are you saying that? Is that what you're saying? Are you saying that? Is, it, is that what you're saying? Are you saying that? Uh, well, no, not not really saying that, but it's, I guess it's kind of when I'm, no, 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 I want to go, he goes, wait a minute, uh, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He goes, I'm gonna, he goes listen to me, I'm going to make this real easy for you. <laughs> and he said, he said, and I, I was already, it was over, I had my foot, insert foot, digest leg. I, I, it was already done. I couldn't get out of this. And he said, you are going to take this job if you have to play bagpipes. <laughs> or if you come home and don't take this job, when you come back home to Penn Salkin, and if don't take this job, I'm going to kick your ass all over this town for saying something so stupid. And I was like, well, wait a minute, everything is, no, 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 the repeater, no, no, no. You got a chance to go on the road with Maynard Ferguson and you're thinking about maybe not doing it because you don't like the, no, no, I'm gonna kick your ass all over this town. So I'm gonna take it easy, it's okay, I know, no, relax, dad, relax, you know. Anyway, uh, I move home, I go out, and the first rehearsal we have is West Dallas Inn. It's a hotel. A lot of times a band would stay in a hotel that had a ballroom, and that's where we would have a rehearsal. So we go, we have our first rehearsal, and I never forget it. The band kicked into the first tune, we're warming up, and I never heard anything like that. It wasn't like anything I heard in college or with playing with anybody else. The band had an energy to it. It was like nothing I ever heard before it felt. And then he walks in, and I'm just looking at him, and I'm just thinking, wow, that's, that's Maynard. We, we didn't meet yet. He, the band gets ready. We're ready for rehearsal. We start playing. Anyway, he took his horn out, and he played. And the first thing he played, we played this tune, Blue Birdland. The very first thing he played, I was, I stopped playing. I never heard anything like that. I never heard this kind of playing where the, 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 the intent behind it was so strong. I, mean, I heard people play that way, but not being in the same band, not standing next to somebody, where everything he played, they played like they were gonna. They knew they were gonna die the next day. I mean, it was a different kind of commitment. I never heard anything like it. It was life changing. The very first note, I was thinking, "Holy smokes, this guy's he's like a Viking," you know. And Buddy Rich was like that. Coltrane was like that. McCoy Tyner was like that. Bill Evans, even though it wasn't a high energy kind of thing, the commitment to how they would play was everything. It was everything. There was nothing that was compromised. I couldn't believe it. I was in a, the whole game changed. Uh, and it's, it's the difference between playing with people like that, like who are, what, who are legends, they're legends for a reason, and, other, and playing with other people who are really good, you know, which is fine too. But playing with that kind of, you know, it, it was just a whole other thing. So after that first rehearsal, I went back and I called my dad. I called my dad and I said, hey, uh, dad, man, we had our first rehearsal. And he was all excited. Yeah, how was it? I said, my God, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. And, uh, you know, I said, you know, this, wisdom of a dad. I said, uh, you were right. You were right about, you know. So he says, what do you mean, right about what? I said, you know, about just taking this gig. And he goes, well, what do you mean? I said, you know, like, you know, like, when I was thinking about not, you know, maybe because I didn't play tenor, maybe not taking the gig. And, and he went, oh, well, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Like, it never happened. Never happened. And that was it. And he was right. He was right. I was wrong. I had... My head was not where it should be. I was stupid, young, 
and uh, and they knew the value of uh, my parents knew the value of, of of what that meant, even if I didn't. I was still wrapped up in my tenor player or Barry player, but it was kind of he just kind of let me have it. Uh, a warning a, of a uh, neighborhood-wide kick-ass session, and uh, he forgot about it. And um, but he was just just happy that you know I was doing it. But it was I never forget that. I never forget that wisdom of the father. That was good. If you come home, I'm gonna kick, <laughs> I'm gonna kick your ass all over this town. What? Now that's a visual. There he goes, down Westfield Avenue, Browning Road. Let's kick his ass. Keep it going. Anyway, I never forget that. And as I get older, I realize I was lucky I had it. So.